Good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome to Monday Night Manor, the Spirit and Truth Outreach Church. Amen. I am here with you tonight on the August 22nd, 2022, in the year of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am so excited to be back with you on tonight for Monday Night Manor. Amen. I'm looking forward to having you come on tonight. If you're here, just acknowledge that you're here. Just want to give God the praise, amen, and all of the glory and honor that's due him on tonight. I am uh, out of my element. I am not at home. I am not in Danville. I am actually in Durham, North Carolina, uh, amen, tonight. Um, not, not in my element, but still in the presence of the Lord. Um, a lot has been going on. A lot has been going on. But I'm just so thankful to be able to be here tonight. If you hear some noise in the background, it is um, going to be the central air unit that's coming on from the um, the hotel room. So please just, I'm going to talk loud, as loud as I can, just bear with me. But um, I'm just so excited about what God is doing. I see where you're coming on. Praise the Lord, Sister Sheila Womack. Praise the Lord, Sister Ruby Wilson. Thank you for coming on. I'm not going to be before you long tonight, but I just want to come back. I just want to let everyone know, the faithful uh, watcher, people who watch, that um, Monday Night Matter has not gone anywhere. We're still live and in effect, but we have had some events take place um, on the 8th of uh, August going into our corporate vacation. Amen. We had some technical difficulties with our internet, and by the time we were able to get our internet back on, it was almost time for the Monday Night Matter to end. So I didn't want to weary anyone's patience, so we just waited. Um, corporate vacation, amen. August 15th was corporate vacation uh, for our church, so we were not um, having any services. And so tonight, which is the 22nd, amen, we came back into our uh, fellowship with um, our regularly scheduled services on um, August the 18th with Bible study. So tonight is Monday night. Even though I'm not at home, I'm still going to come on and we're going to still give God some praise for what he has done. He's done a great thing. I'm actually in um, Duke with um, our apostle who had to have surgery today. But I want you all to know that the prayers of the righteous, the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous have of much. And God brought him through. And he is um, up right now with his leg elevated and he's resting. But I want you to know that God brought him through. He, he's not having as much pain as he thought. But we know that with um, anything, anytime you have surgery, um, once all of the anesthesia wears off, you can have some pain. But even in that, God has him. We're still here. We have an early appointment tomorrow before we head back to Danville. So all of the prayer warriors, all of you, Amen. Keep him and us in our church in prayer. God bless you, uh, Lady Alice, for coming on tonight. And God bless you. I see, amen, when you're coming on. And just give God the praise. But um, you're listening to, if you can hear it, amen, in the background, the soaking instrumental worship music is um, Welcome Holy Spirit. Because we definitely want to welcome the Holy Spirit into this broadcast on tonight. Amen. Because we want the Holy Spirit to move on us. We're going to do something a little different tonight um, because I didn't have time to prepare uh, a message. I just want to use the uh, Daily Bread devotional, amen. We do use this um, for Bible study, and a lot of people use the Daily Bread devotional for just their own personal time with the Lord. But we're going to be coming, amen, tonight. Um, the Daily Bread for Monday, August 22nd. The title of it is Transmitting Truth. And it's coming from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 9 through 14. And we do have a theme, a central verse um, that we're going to deal with, Deuteronomy 4 and 9. But I just want to give more people an opportunity to come on. I know it's been a couple of Mondays and people may have uh, thought that we've fallen off or we were doing something different. For, but for all of the people who regularly tune in to the Monday Night Manor, um, if you see it pop up on the live, please just click on it and come on back with me. Um, uh, we're not going anywhere, amen. Things happen and obstacles come, but we're still, amen, going to give God the glory. STLC represent, amen, if you will, with the STLC, amen, um, 
and the strong arm emoji if you haven't already done so. Please let everybody know that's joining us tonight that you are a part of this great ministry. Amen. So we thank and praise the Lord. Not to wear anyone's patience, but whoever's on is who God wants to be on tonight. Amen. And I'm just so thankful. So I see when you're coming on, just come on and represent STLC. God bless you, Sister Latoya. So just come on in the room, amen. Come on in the room. We're going to be, um, some of you may have a copy of A Daily Bread, amen. I know that um, STLC, you all have a copy of The Daily Bread. So we're going to be using that tonight, amen, to keep it simple. And the title is Transmitting Truth. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready to stop the music. If anyone else comes on, I'll go ahead and I'll give my disclaimer. God bless you. Uh, uh, Sister Prophetess Edna McNeil Austin is on watching tonight. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and stop the music. And I'll go ahead and give my disclaimer, as I always do in the beginning, that if this, uh, if you share this video with them um, on your timeline or with friends and family, and if it happens to pop up and someone does not want to watch it, it's perfectly okay. They can click off of it. I just ask that you be respectful and not to put negative comments because we know that we're spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. And, you know, um, it's, it's up to you, your choice to watch or whatever, but we just want you to be respectful because the good news is going to be spread regardless of what anyone thinks. But, you know, sometimes we look at the messenger and not the message, but just take me out of the equation. The word of God is right all by itself. It can never fail. So if it's a, if you have a problem with because you don't know me or if you have a problem by maybe I just don't look like you think I should look or whatever the case may be, no harm done, no love lost. But I just ask that you be respectful. Uh, if you haven't already done so, I ask that you would like, follow, and share the videos. Amen. It does help to know that you all are helping me to, to perform the Great Commission, to fulfill the Great Commission that Jesus gave us before he ascended back. He said, go ye into all the earth, preaching, amen, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So help me to fulfill the Great Commission amen on tonight so as you always we're going to open up a prayer i want everyone to know that of course you know i have a burden on my heart for the bereaved families there's still so many people who have lost loved ones who are going through in this day and time we just want to keep the families lifted up because you know i heard someone say um the other day when the cards stop coming when the business stop phone calls stop we are left with our grief and sometimes it could be unbearable but we know that Jesus is going to be with us he said I will always be with you I will never leave you or forsake you so we ask we're asking in prayer tonight that Jesus will continue to wrap his loving arms of protection around those who are going through bereavement also for those who are going who've gone through surgery like our very own apostle senior pastor of spirit and truth outreach church and those like him Amen. Who've been going through um, situations, those who've been battling illnesses and sicknesses in their body. Amen. We pray God's blessings and healing over you as well. We're praying for the conditions of this world, this nation. We're praying for all the chaos because we know that the Lord is soon to come. So our prayer is that we will be ready to go when the time comes. So we're going to turn our attention to a word of prayer before we actually get into the daily bread um, devotional tonight. So just bear with me. Pray with me wherever you may be. Purpose in your heart and mind, amen, to pray. And um, we know that he will hear us. He will hear our prayers. Not a sinner man's prayer, but those who be worshipers of him, he whom he will hear. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just want to take this opportunity just to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You've been so good. If we had 10,000 times, we could not thank you enough. We lift you up and we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you all the praise that is due you on this day. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We ask you right now as we come boldly to the throne of grace to find help in the time of need, Father God, that you will, we ask that we, we're going to humble ourselves and search our heart and examine ourselves to see if we are the faith. We're asking you, Father God, to forgive us for each and every transgression, each and every sin, sins of commission, sins of omission, anything that we've said or done or thought that was contrary to your will and your way for our lives and how we are representing you, we ask you to forgive us. Father God, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus to look down. You've heard the prayer request on the sick, the shut-in, the bereaved families. Look down on the incarcerated, Father God. Look down on those who are in the hospital.
hospital rooms and nursing homes, Father God, mental institutions, those who are lost and don't know you in the pardon of their sin, those, Father God, who for whatever reason, they're despondent and downtrodden and depressed. But we know that you are a burden bearer and a heavy load sharer. We know that you are, uh, the, you will give us beauty for ashes and you will give us joy for the oil of mourning. You will give us the oil of joy. I'm asking you right now, Father God, as we prepare to go into this daily bread devotional tonight, that all of those under the sound of my voice, that you will open up your word to them. Let them be a hearer, doers of the word, not only hearers only. Let them go and share this word with someone Father God. We're asking you for those who may be joining us, who may come onto the broadcast that you would touch them in such a special way. Whatever they stand in need of we know you're going to do it. We're asking you right now Father God to uh, help us, amen, to be able to receive your word and to let it come in and change our life and we will be able to apply it as we go through the week. We thank you, we praise you right now. We give your name all, all honor and glory in Jesus name. Say amen, amen. Tonight like I stated before, we're coming from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 9 through 14. But the title of the Daily Bread Devotional is called Transmitting the Truth. And before we actually read the actual uh, little story that goes with it, the central verse for today, uh, for this Daily Bread uh, Devotional, is teach God's ways and instructions to your children and to their children after them. And that's coming from Deuteronomy uh, 4 and 9. But for good measure, we'll go ahead, and I'm going to read, if you have your Bible or whatever way you're following along with me, to access the Word, we're going to go ahead and start reading from 9, and we're going to read through verses 14. So this is, amen, Moses, of course, amen, talking to, giving um, them, the children of Israel instructions about what to do, amen, concerning uh, keeping those uh, descendants and, and those children knowledgeable of the things of God. So, verse 9 says, Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest, thou depart, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Amen. And then it says, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. And verse 11 says, And ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And verse 12 says, And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only ye heard a voice. And verse 13 says, And he declared unto you, just let me flip over, give me one minute, Amen. The Bible papers are kind of sticking together here like new money. Amen. Let me just flip over. Mm. Doesn't want to turn. And he declared unto you, that's the beginning of verse 13. Moving right along. His covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. And the last verse says, And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that you might do them in the land whither you go over to possess it. Amen. So once again, that's Moses talking to the children of Israel, giving them instructions about how God gave him the ten commandments to give to them and how God wants them to remember what he did for them, how he brought them out of bondage. Amen. Um, and brought them... Um, into a land, amen, of promise. So we're going to go ahead and read the devotional. It says, Without the ability to see their grandchildren in person due to risk of infection, many grandparents sought new ways of connecting during the COVID-19 pandemic. A recent survey showed that many grandparents adopted texting and social media as a means to maintain their precious bond with their grandchildren. Some even worship with their extended families by video call. 
One of the most wonderful ways parents and grandparents can influence their children is by passing down the truths of Scripture. In Deuteronomy 4, Moses charged God's people to not forget the things they'd seen about God or let them fade from their hearts. In verse 9, he went on to say that sharing these things with their children and their children's children would enable them to learn to re re revere him according to verse 10, and to live according to his truth in the land he was giving them. The relationships God gives us with our families and friends are certainly meant to be enjoyed. By God's design, they're also intended to be a conduit to convey his wisdom from one generation to another, training them in righteousness and equipping them for every good work according to 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. When we share God's truth and work in our lives with the next generation, whether by text, call, video, or in-person conversation, we equip them to see and enjoy his work in their own lives. And this commentary was written by Kirsten Holmberg for the Daily uh, Bread devotional. Now, isn't this something? Isn't this ironic? Amen. Talking about amen teaching your children and your children's children about the things of the Lord. You know how it is. Um, traditions are passed down from families, you know, um, and things that we do, and we consider them to be a tradition, and we continue to do those things because it's just things that, you know, uh, we um, revere or we hold sacred as, a, as families. You know, we get together at um holiday uh, at holiday time thanksgiving christmas is a celebrations and we celebrate birthdays and we get together to uh celebrate holidays well summertime memorial day we have labor day coming up that's supposed to signify the end of the summer summer season heading into fall so we have all of these things that we do that we hold dear that are considered traditions for us. And these are things that we pass down. Recipes have been passed down from family to family, generation to generation. But it's nothing like passing down, amen, the word of God. You know, the Bible says that we are to train up our child in the way that they should go. And when, and though, when they get old, they may stray from it. They may depart, but they'll return. So, um, you know, we see here, according to this daily bread, with transmitting the truth, the truth of God's word, we have had a lot of things said and done to us in our, um, you know, families of origins and things that we do, amen, and even things in the church that we do that are traditional, but yet they're not really biblical, but they're considered extra biblical, but we hold these things to be, those are things we've always done, you know, back in the day when, um, well, we, we, we went from, you know, all of these eras that we've had to go through as a people, as a race, and, you know, the pastors and, um, you know, telling the people and giving the people what they could give them based on their understanding, amen, of what the Lord had given to them. Uh, we also understand that, you know, education was limited, different things. It's not about education. It doesn't have anything to do with it. The Holy Ghost can give you a first class education on a PhD level and you wouldn't have to even step foot, amen, into a school. But I just want to let you know that we're, we're talking about, amen, things that, you know, will keep us and hinder us and, and hold us back when we have uh, limitations, but there are no limitations in God. I just want you to know that. But Moses was encouraging them not to forget what God had done for them. You know, uh, God did a marvelous thing. And even though we were not there to see it, and with our own eyes, we understand that it would have been a sight to see. Can you just imagine if you would have been there and you were able to see, amen, the Red Sea parted and the children of Israel able to walk through on dry land to get and to be delivered from um, bondage through Pharaoh and the Egyptians? You know, you think about that. And Moses told them, you know, you, you, he didn't want them to forget. It's, that was an important thing that they were freed, and he wanted it to be passed down from generation to generation. You know, whatever you instill in someone over and over again, that is what they're going to, and then get it down on the inside of them, that they're going to have them on the inside of them, and they're going to hold that thing to be dear. So the word of God, and Moses is um, having Moses having the children of Israel to and uh, tell them about what God did for them, what it was doing, it was building a healthy respect, amen, for the things of God and God and his delivering power, amen, for them. 
And so when you pass down the wisdom, you know, you hear stories, amen, about um, they didn't have, they couldn't write it down. So stories and things were passed down from the storytellers in the family, from the oral history, you know, passed down um, from generation to generation. And this is exactly, amen, what Moses was telling them to do. And he said that, you know, when you, um, the relationships that God gave us, you know, they're meant to be nurtured. You know, he gives us families for a reason. We were not created to be alone. We were created to be uh, with others, you know. Uh, that's just a, something that's inside of us. Even animals are created and they have a family structure and things like that, hierarchy and, and, and you know, being together to be able to look out for each other. And, and the same thing, of course, God gave us. So the relationships that he gives us, like they said in the commentary, you know, with our families and friends, we have to enjoy them. Those are things that we have to enjoy, but we also must remember that we have these things for a reason. We're supposed to be gaining wisdom and knowledge from each other. We first gain it from God, and then we pass it on to those who we care about and we love from generation to generation. And so when you train up someone in righteousness, amen, that's what you're going to get. The Bible is true, and it says in Galatians that, you know, God is not mocked. Whatever, whatsoever a man sow, that is what he's going to reap. So if you sow, amen, if you sow um, the things that are not good for you, if you sow, you're going to, i um, trying to get it right now. It's been, I got a lot going on, so I'm just trying to, to paraphrase a little bit. Um, if you're going to sow life, uh, if you're going to sow, you're going to reap life. If you sow the things that are spirit. But if you don't, and you're going to sow corruption if you do those things that are contrary to the will of God. So just like you can pass on good things traditionally and down through the, um, the years, uh, things that are, you know, that you pass down, you can also pass down bad habits and traits as well. So we have to be very careful. So if you are going to train them up in righteousness, you're going to pass on righteousness, then that's what you're going to do. You're going to uh, get the reciprocal righteousness and also you're equipping them for every good work. You know, um, to instilling in them the things of God and how God, when we get saved, it's not for us to become a pea warmer, but to get saved for us to be able to be able to be about our father's business and to be ready to be about every good work, you know. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Help us one to another. We're supposed to be praying one for another. We're supposed to be looking after the the the, the um the homeless and helping those who are in need. You know, in the book of James, the apostle James said, if you really want to know, ask yourself the question, what is pure religion? He said, pure the religion is this, is to help look after the widows and the fathers and to remain unspotted from the world. So if you ever want to know what God looks at as pure religion, just go to the book of James and read that. And you'll see, amen, when you look after those who are less fortunate, when you look after the homeless and the widows or those who have lost them uh, and they, they're struggling, they may be lonely. It's not always about money. It's not always about giving someone money, but just giving, praying for them, amen praying for them and lifting them up before the Lord and just an encouraging word, I mean, just to let somebody know that you care just as well as God cares for them and that you're keeping, keeping them lifted up in prayer. So that's another thing that we must remember, uh, you know, excuse me, when we share the truth of God's word, amen, and it, and the work in our, and it works in our lives with the next generation, we are responsible Amen. Uh, the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul tells us that we are responsible. We're not to provoke our children and to wrath, but we are to raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. It's our job, parents, grandparents, those who are, may be responsible for others. It may be your, your grandchildren, your great uh, grandchildren, it may be great nieces, great nephews. It may be, you know, nieces, nephews, cousins, whatever. Whoever you're responsible for, to, to uh, you may be helping raise um, someone up and you may be a surrogate mother or father or, you know, just, you know, a big brother, big sister, anything. But you, if, if you're in the Lord, it is your job, amen, to encourage those who you are influencing in the things of God. So it's our, um, it's our job. Just like when COVID came, according to the commentary, you know, we couldn't go and we couldn't go around and hug and kiss and, and the grandparents couldn't see their grandchildren. And, you know, we had to stay away from each other. And there was, um, you know, years, two, 
two years and, and you know that people were having um, children were having babies and their parents couldn't even uh, see them only on video or on FaceTime that was a lot to deal with but at the same time when COVID came on the scene and, and put in that roadblock that stumbling block amen to keep them from having actual physical contact there was a ram in the bush the FaceTime Amen. The video calls and all of these things like that. Social media is what we had to use to make sure that we stayed in contact. But now we have the word of God, amen, to make sure that we stay in close contact and we stay in the will of God to make sure that we're doing those things that he has called us to do. Amen. So it's just interesting to see that it's a lot of things that are going on in the world today. Amen. A lot of false information, a whole lot of untruths, a whole lot of half truths. Amen. But the one thing about it, if you spread and talk about the truth, amen, the truth will make you free. Can I get a witness? It'll make you free. And whom the Son has made free is certainly free indeed. Amen. So we're just so thankful to God that we're learning tonight about the truth and about keeping the Lord, the word of the Lord always, amen, nigh to us on our tongue, in our heart, and our mind, and being able to spread, amen, that to those, amen, that we care about and to those, amen, who mean something to us because, you know, if charity starts at home, then it's spread abroad. Come on, somebody. Uh, if you, uh, you know, don't take it upon yourself to make sure that those in your household know the things of God and know how to go out here in the world and treat others and, and you know, be respectful and, and to reverence God, you know, the element that's missing, you know, you have all of these things, it's been a disconnect because this very thing right here about transmitting the truth, that's what has happened. You know, it's been a breakdown and a disconnect because, you know, one time, you know, if the children were being taken to church, they were the fear of God, a healthy fear now, was being put into them about the things of God. But now it's been a disconnect. For some reason, um, church with, and the things of God have been put on the back burner. They became less important, and it's become a me mentality. If you go to 2 Timothy 3, it tells you about we're living in the last perilous days, and if he gives you, the Apostle Paul, all of the signs that we're in the, the last days, and it said that we become heady and high-minded. We become lovers of selves more than lovers of God, traitors. We become, you know, disrespectful, of, I mean, disobedient to parents, you know, just all of these things. And uh, Jesus tells us in Matthew 2 that the love of many is going to wax cold so we have a disconnect and that's why you're seeing all of the things you're seeing right now um, all of the sisters killings and school mass shootings and all of these things because people have no regard for their life and they have no regard for human life it's just a sign of the times but the one of the reasons is there's been a disconnect and the things of God I no longer being taught and stressed to to the young people, amen. And um, they're just getting further and further away from the things of God because the truth has not been manifested and, and given to them. Come on here, somebody. And so that is why it's so easy to do and say the things that we do. And it's so easy for the young people and uh, uh, older adults too. Some of the things that you hear people do and say when you're out in the community and when you're at the grocery store, at the mall, wherever you may be, restaurants, you hear a lot of language. You hear things that may be appalling to you and you see things, but that's because the, of the breakdown of the, the children and the people are not being um, taught about the things of God and about how all of these things are going to come into play one day. So my thing to you, my my question to you tonight is this. Who has transmitted God's truth to you? Maybe it was your mother, your father. Maybe it was an auntie, your uncle, grandparents, <coughs> your pastor, and then a deacon or teacher, somebody in the church. And if you were a man, had this truth transmitted to you, right? With whom can you share his truth? A man, maybe somebody that you, a man, um, may know that they not, they not coming to church. Maybe they can't drive or they're, they're under the weather. They may be elderly. But how can you still share the truth of the Lord, of the things of God with someone, a man, that you may not see on a regular or, you know, that may not, it's a barrier or it's a, 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 a I don't want to put it, say barrier, but it's a, um, uh, something that's keeping you from actually being a man in their presence. But I want to let you know, you can um, write a, a, a note. You know, I know we have phones and I know we have, 
you know, the technology, you know, we have that and Facebook and social media and everything, but we've gotten away, you know, sometimes it's just taking the time to write a note or write a card and send it to somebody. It doesn't always have to be a text or a phone call or a tweet or something like that. But any of those things, we do have this. We are in the, the age of technology and we need to take advantage of it and we, we do need to, amen, to use it. But sometimes we just need to go to a person. God will put somebody in this bitch. You go knock on the door and, and see if they're home. Amen. I know we're still in the pandemic, but we can wear a mask and we can social distance. Amen. Or, or even mailing a note. Or uh, if you have to, if you don't have any other way, maybe you can do a, 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 a message through Facebook Messenger or a text. But in any event, the truth that has been given in place in our heart, we can still share. It's no, it's no barrier, you know, you know, to keep us. If we really want to do something, you know, how it is when I think about the baby gates that we people put up when they have small children to keep them out of certain areas. So even if they have a pet in the house, they don't want them to go certain places. But I want you to know that if you really, really want to get somewhere, it doesn't matter about a baby gate. I've seen it happen. If you have a pet, if they want to get over it, they'll jump over it. A child can figure out how to get uh, that baby gate open. So if you really, really want to do something, you'll find a way to do it. It's the same way with this spreading the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ even with transmitting the truth. If you really want to do it, you'll find a way to do it. Amen. So, um, the last thing I want to leave with you, amen, is we're going to thank God. We thank you, God, for the legacy of faith that you passed on to us, passed on to me, passed on to you. Amen. Please help us to lovingly impart that legacy to others. We have a mandate as men and women of God, Christians, those of us who say we love the Lord, it's just not for us. We are to spread the good news. We are not to let people forget. We are to encourage somebody. Don't let them forget what God did to you did for you. Don't tell them how he brought you out of sin. Tell them how, amen, he lifted you up out of a horrible pit. Tell them how he turned you around and placed your feet on solid ground. Tell somebody, amen, that there's healing in Jesus, amen. Tell somebody there's love in Jesus, amen. That his blood, amen, covers a multitude of sin. Hallelujah. That his love, he said that a new commandment I leave unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Before he ascended back, he said, that's how people are going to know, amen, that you are my disciple love amen love is the secret ingredient love will always win i mean tell somebody it was the love of jesus that how you can now convey his truth to others amen to let them know no matter what you're going through no matter what has happened no matter what the doctor says no matter what the court says that jesus is still in control and the truth of god hallelujah the truth amen of his love for us amen will always resonate in us when we make sure amen that we're keeping it on our tongue. Moses said, and I'm closing, Moses told the children, he said, don't forget, don't, not, don't forget the things. What you seen, you saw the Red Sea open up, and um, we walked through dry land. You saw that, amen. Hallelujah. And can't talk about it. Because what you're passionate about, you're going to talk about. Come on, somebody. What you love, you're going to keep on your tongue. Everybody will know. You don't have to be a fanatic. But I tell you one thing, amen. You will let the Spirit of the Lord rule, lead, and guide you. And let your light so shine before men. And everybody will know where you stand, amen. Don't let the people forget, amen, that God has done so much for us, amen. And if he doesn't do anything else, he's done enough. But I want you to know he's not finished yet, amen. There's still much work to be done. And there's still many souls that need to be saved. There's still many people that need to be snatched, amen, out of the hand of Satan. But if you keep it on your lips, amen, and be so ever ready to spread the good news, to spread the truth of the gospel, you will be able to reach somebody, amen. Amen. I just want to thank you all who came on tonight with me for Monday Night Man, amen. I, I told the Lord, I said, you know, Lord, you, you put this ministry in me. You gave me this ministry, and I'm going to do the best I can, amen, to make sure that I get on here. Even if it's just one person who watches me, I am successful. It's not about, see, we have, we need to change our attitude and the way we look at things. Because Jesus, in the word, the book of Proverbs says that he who wins a soul is wise. One soul, if you can touch one person's life, if you can minister to one person and they come out of sin, and they find Christ through you uh, uh, talking to them and 
sharing your testimony. You have been very successful. It's not about the size, amen, of the ministry or how many people fill the pews, but it's about what the people who are inside of those that church is doing and taking on the outside, what they're learning and what they're being taught. And then they're going out to bring other sheep in to be fed. That's what the success is. And that has nothing to do with stained glass windows and uh, if you got a balcony, if you got the best uh, instruments and all that. What it has to do with is a matter of the heart. The Holy Spirit, amen. And if Jesus is in the center, you cannot fail. So I just thank and praise the Lord that he dealt with me about success and about success in life and about success in ministry. We need to wake up and realize, amen, that we're doing things and if a lot of people are not affected, God will allow you to touch that one person that he wants you, amen, to impact their life. So I'm just thankful on tonight. And I just praise him for what he has done by the way of this Daily Bread devotional tonight, Transmitting Truth. As you go throughout the week, amen, pay it forward, amen. We always say that at uh, Spirit and Truth when we do the announcements, our church clerk always says, pay it forward, amen. As you go throughout the week, do something nice for somebody. Pray for somebody, amen. Uh, encourage somebody, amen, in the things of God, in the truth. Uh, hallelujah. And God will certainly bless you. And once again, this is Pastor Gail. And I invite you to come back with me next Monday uh, around this time between 8 and 8.15 for, and just uh, go with me for a few minutes as we uh, let the Lord have his way. Amen. And I just want to let you know that, you know, God, is, like I said, he's not finished yet. Amen. Get in position because it's getting ready to be a tidal wave and you want to get wet because water represents, amen, the Holy Spirit. You want to get wet. Amen. He said it's going to, the Holy Spirit will come up and flow out of you, out of your belly like rivers of of, of water, living water. You want to be wet, amen, for the Lord. You want to be saturated with his spirit and with his presence. So get in position because you're getting ready to see some things happen. You get doors are ready to open for you, amen, that, that uh, needed to be opened. Some doors are going to be shut that should have been shut a long time ago, amen. God is going to bless you, amen. Some people are waiting on a job, amen, a job, amen, you've been praying for. God's going to open up a door. Some people have been waiting, amen, they got finances that are being held up. God's getting ready to release them, amen. Watch what I tell you, amen. People have been struggling in their bodies with pain. Their doctors don't know what this, what's going on, but Jesus is ready to release, amen, his healing balm over your life. Is there a balm in Gilead? Yes, and his name is Jesus. Whatever it is that you need, amen, just have the faith to believe that it's your time to receive. Amen. Get ready. It's, you're getting ready to get wet. Amen. And I'm talking about the saturation of the Holy Spirit. So on behalf of my apostle, keep him in prayer. Amen. As he continues to heal, uh, as I get ready to, to pray and we close out, just remember, Jesus loves you and so do we. Remember to follow us, like uh, the page, follow it, and you won't miss any of our live broadcasts. And if you ever want to, uh, in our neighborhood at 114 Dudley Street, the church that sits on the hill where the Spirit of the Lord indeed lives, you're welcome uh, for Sunday school at 945 and then morning worship at 11 o'clock. Amen. Come on over and worship the Lord with us. Amen. Like I said, they say it's a sign about Gretton, and I love it. It says it ain't no big thing, but it's growing. That's the way I feel, amen, about our ministry. It, to you, it might not be a big thing, but it's growing. We're growing in the things of the Lord, and God is growing us in the spirit first to manifest in the natural. You ought to get excited about that. For all of you who are watching, whatever church you're a part of, I... um. Pray for you all and your pastors and your church family that God will continue to bless you and in, um, increase you, amen, in things of God and increase you, amen, in uh, natural things. So we thank you and we're going to get ready to pray, amen, tonight, amen, bring somebody to your heart and mind. We're going to pray, amen, that God will take the blindness off of other people's eyes. According to Apostle Paul, when he said in Corinthians, he said, the God of this world, amen, we know that it's Satan, has blinded the eyes of the people, lest the light of the glorious gospel shine in. That's what's holding up too. When we're talking about truth, transmitting truth, a lot of that people are being held up because their their eyes have been blinded, amen, by the enemy, and their hearts are, are hard, and we want to pray that the fallow ground is broken up. We want to pray, amen, that the blindness come off their eyes. We want to pray, amen, that God will set the conditions and the stage for them, hallelujah, for the glorious light of the gospel to shine in so that they may be saved, amen. We thank God and let us prepare to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, once again, we come to you just thanking you for this tonight, thanking you for the Monday night manner, thanking you and lifting you up. 
in the name of Jesus for your many blessings you bestowed upon us as you have let, allowed us to learn about your truth tonight. Let us keep your truth on our lips and in our heart. Let us talk about how you have brought us out. Let us be like the children of Israel and not forget. Let us instill your love and your loving kindness and your mercy and grace into our children. And then, then they will instill it into their children and then their children's children. So that it will be a continuous legacy going forth. So that everyone will know, amen. That you are a great God. That you are a loving God. Hey, hallelujah. You are the creator of heaven and earth and all things in. Let us remember, Father God, as we go throughout this week to encourage somebody in the things of God. To tell them the truth. To let them know. To sanctify. Sanctify us, Father God, with your truth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Send somebody our way that we can encourage. And send us somewhere to be an encouragement as well as amen. Allowing us, amen, to, to reminisce and to to continue to respect and, and reverence you, uh, hallelujah, for who you are. Oh, Father God, as we get ready to close tonight, we ask you, hallelujah, to watch over us. We pray a Psalms 91 prayer over each and every person under the sound of my voice tonight, that no evil shall befall them and no plague shall come near that dwelling. Oh, Father God, that you would keep them in all their ways and that you will hold them up lest they will fall and, and the angels will hold them up lest they will dash their feet against the stone. We're asking you right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that you would keep us safe throughout this night. Give us traveling mercy over the dangerous highways where we go to and fro. And if we, you allow us, Father God, to rise up in the morning, then we will rise up with a new purpose and a sense of direction and giving you all glory, honor, and praise. And use us, Father God, for your glory. Use us. And we thank you right now. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Let everyone say amen. Amen. Once again, thank you so much. God bless each and every one of you. We can't go anywhere but up from here, people of God. We going up, amen. But just be ready. You go up another level, another devil, but you can make it, amen. Because Jesus said he will be right by our side. Everyone have a blessed evening. Until we meet again next Monday, hallelujah. God bless you. We love you. And take care, amen. In Jesus' name, good night, everyone. Amen. Shalom.